Greetings once again, everybody. Today is Saturday, October 31st, 2015, and uh, we didn't do one of these last week, but uh, here we are again with a silly segment that we call the Weekend Trader. Um, we're trying to uh, continue to keep the momentum going here again. I really start with a premise every day of if I weren't doing this with a camera and the blog, what might I, might I be thinking about? Uh, what might... Uh, be something that I'm working on, uh, what my perspectives in the market, life, trading, all that kind of stuff. And that's that's really how this whole thing started um, back in, in 2007 in terms of, of the current site. And uh, as I said back then, uh, all, all I'm doing is really inviting you to look over my shoulder as one person, as one trader, um, not to quote the gospel of Don, the gospel of trading, the gospel of life, but to... Um, to really have a, a a diary essentially, which is which has been made public. So you know, here we are again today, and I'm thinking about okay, what can I talk about? What 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 would I normally talk about? And if it's helpful for you, I mean, we're getting you know five to six hundred views of the video. You know, given the industry, given the those that are really serious in the industry, that that tells me you know you know there's certainly some. Um, interest in, in continuing to do this, but again, if, if, if you don't find this uh, helpful, beneficial, please, um, you know, make more productive use of your time, um, and, uh, and and we'll we'll continue under that premise. Uh, if, if you uh, if you'd like to watch something else, change the channel. <laughs> okay, I say that in part because I, I tweeted out recently uh, uh, something about words that I wish I would see more often in this life, words words such as encourage, uh, uplift, support. Um, and, and words that, especially when you get in social media, uh, in, in the world of uh, anonymity, uh, there, there's uh, much too little of. Um, and, uh, and the older I've, I've, I've gotten, the longer I've lived, the more that I, I, I realize that, uh, that we, we do need to do that. We do need to uh, encourage, support, uplift one another. Uh, I mean, that's why we're here, and, and not to get all preachy on you, but uh, uh, I'm coming off of uh, a couple of weekends where that's been the focus of my life. Um, and, and as I fall far short of, of that in many areas, uh, realizing the, the significance, uh, the impact that, that even simple gestures can have um, uh, over the course of life. So uh, to the extent that, that anybody is, is, you know, looking over my shoulder, if you will, uh, you know, we'll try to, try to make it as, as worthwhile as, as possible, uh, you know, given the limitations of what we do here. So. Uh, continued thanks if, if this does provide some interest uh, to you. I'm looking down at, at some notes that I scribbled out uh, based on what's happened over the last couple of weeks. Uh, a couple of different topics, maybe a little bit random here, uh, but it relates certainly to life uh, and trading. Um, you know, there was there was some dialogue going on Twitter that I noticed a couple of days ago that uh, that addressed the concept of scaling out versus not scaling out, and and you know, someone saying that that uh, now you could you should never scale out because you sub optimize and and then. You know, others, including myself, who, who believe strongly, based on on you know a couple of decades of experience, that, that it's really the, the the way that fits our uh, need and our, our personality and our P&L the best uh, with documented evidence. Uh, so you know, you get two schools of thought, and and you know, from my perspective, uh, it, it always comes back to to being adaptable. Um, and and I did a post uh, many many months ago, might even been a couple of years ago now, that, that says that, that said everything is not a nail, and, and, and I'm sure you've heard this elsewhere. Um, you know, everything is not a nail, and, and and you can't you can't go into this business with hard and fast rules. Now that's not to say that that there are not systems uh, and methods and processes by where you know you can have a, a targeted entry price with well defined risk and reward, and and you you hold it there. Um, you know, to to reap at least the the majority of, of the move uh, when it occurs. You know, under the law of probability, you knowing it's not always going to occur, and and so it it, it certainly comes down to math uh, in terms of, of, of what works. Um, but you know, having said that, uh, you know, in my in my view, it, it comes down to, to to needing to be adaptable. And again, you go back to the silly, you know, the jellyfish analogy, the the the, the the concept that that we need to adapt to to what the market is doing, to what life is doing. So from a market's perspective, you know, we, we talk a lot about trend days and day after trend days, and I mean, I mean these are just rhythms. It goes back to the kindergarten slide that I used in New York uh, several years ago, where I basically said, what do markets do? They consolidate, they they uh, they break out, they extend, they back and fill, and they repeat the process. I mean, that that's really what this is about, um, you know, and and so. 
the idea is to to understand where we are in these cycles and to adapt one's trading to fit those cycles. So, um, you know, if if we've just been if we've just experienced a, a trend, whether it be over, you know, uh, an hour, you know, strong moonshot type trend or or a slower trend over the course of a day or a couple of days, you know, we're, we're going to expect some backing and filling. You know, it's just the natural evolution, the natural rotation of markets. Um, and, and so we, we need to be adapting our, uh, our trading methodology to that. And, you know, if, if you've got a trading methodology that says, you know, uh, you know I, I'm going after, you know, 20 points, for example, in the S&Ps, uh, and you're in clearly an oscillating market, but, but you know, that's, you know, that's the nail that you see. So you're using that same hammer and you're saying, you know, I'm not going to scale, I'm not going to scale, I'm not going to scale out. Well, you know, you're going to make money, you know, fewer times than, than not. Um, uh, and, and so, you know, it's very important to identify where we are in cycles over the course of a day, a week, or a month, or whatever. Um, so, you know, I, I will go to my grave knowing with, with conviction that, that, you know, everything is not a nail. Uh, and I said that anyone that, that tells you that it has to be this way or that way is, is trying to sell you a hammer. Um, so, so, I mean, if, if, if it were that easy, then, you know, let's all go buy a system and, and stay home, you know, and, and go lie on the beach somewhere because it, it really, I mean, that, that, I guess it, it, it bothers me a little bit when I hear things like that because um, the, the need to adapt, um, you know, does it take more work? Yeah, it does, uh, but that's where the rewards are. Um, and so, you know, identify the market rhythms and align yourself, align, align your, your trading sequences to the rhythm and play. And eating off the menu that's before you, and, and all the stuff we've talked about recently. I mean, that's uh, that's where the hard work is done. Um, you know, just just you know, waiting for maximum, um, I hit, trying to hit a, hitting a home run or positioning for a home run every single time. You know, the math may work for you, uh, and, and 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 I don't I don't deny that, uh, but you're going to strike out a, a lot, uh, far many more times. Uh, and I'd I'd rather have more of a consistent equity curve in terms of this business. So, um, you know, that's, that's one thing to think about. I remember b back to discussion I had several years ago with a trader who, who I mean, the angst that he was under because uh, I, I forget what the target was, but let, let's say it was 20, 25 points. Uh, and he got like nine, he got 19 and he, he refused to scale out of anything. And, um, you know, and, and, I, and I came back on it reversed. I mean, it was, it was the, uh, um, the capitulation at, at that point and and you know he didn't recognize it and and he had to stick with with the system so um uh, you know uh i do agree that that you know if, if you're if you're carefully identifying your targets ahead of time and those targets are reflective of the rhythm and play then yeah um then I, I think that there's there's certainly some sense to that um and i know dr brett has has much written on this so i i i just caution us on on having any any definitive unchanging rule um, you know because if it were that easy you know uh, you know we'd all be doing it and and we're not and and I, I certainly understand that there are times when people will sub optimize by by locking in that profit taking that quick profit and um, and seeing the market continue in, in the direction of, of you know wh where you expect it and that's not what I'm talking about what I'm talking about is identifying the rhythm and play and then adjusting one's sequence, one's target to that, um, to that expectation. That, and that's where the work comes in, really. Uh, so again, my thoughts on, on that for what it's worth. Uh, Mark Douglas, uh, God rest his soul, uh, um, you know, has some, has some great stuff on that as well. And, and, and just food for thought. Uh, uh, by the way, I, I, I imagine many of you know this, but if you, if you don't know this, uh, uh, it was a month or two ago, uh, Mark uh, uh, left us, uh, he, he passed on, and uh, his imprint is, is forever on the trading world. And uh, uh, Mark, thanks for, for everything that you've done for us, or written some great books. So um, anyway, be, be, I'd, I'd caution us in terms of absolutes, right? If, if someone's trying to convince you of an absolute in life or an absolute in, uh, uh, in trading, then uh, uh, be careful of not trying to sell you a hammer. Uh, so that's that's one thing. Excuse me, just for a second. <coughs> Another concept. Everybody's favorite topic. Uh, boy, if, if you don't like my ugly mug here uh, every week, uh, you may not like this concept. Uh, con uh, topic. Concept. Topic. Uh, uh, Tom Brady. 
I was, I was watching Mike and Mike in the morning. Uh, they do an ESPN uh, radio show, and, they, and it's, it's simulcast on TV uh, every morning. I think it starts at 6 on the uh, East Coast. Um, and, and this was after Thursday night's game. And, and um, you know, uh, they're basically talking about, you know, we, we, are, we are really blessed on watching what is now statistically the, the best quarterback in the history of the NFL. Um, and and uh, while there are many good players, um, many good quarterbacks, and everybody with a different style, that kind of thing, statistically anyway, um, uh, it, it's, it's wonderful. And you can take any sport. It's wonderful to be, be in an age where we can witness um, excellence, you know, not perfection, but excellence. And, and please, from a trading perspective, be careful, okay? Excellence, perfection, big difference. Okay, we're after excellence. And, and to watch somebody in the prime of, of, of his career, and again, you could do this with any sport, but, but in my case, yes, I, I follow the Patriots, um, uh, more so to, to try to see what lessons I can learn from successful organization. You're going to be a good trader. You want to model yourself after successful traders. You want to be you know, a great athlete. You model yourself there, and so on and so forth. And, and just a couple of things strike, strike me. The, um, at, at the age of 38, uh, to be at the one's top, top of – one's game in a very violent industry and, and looking at the mental preparation, looking at the, the physical preparation, uh, what goes into the guy's mouth uh, in terms of, of food intake, um, you know, all these little things that you and I, you know, probably discount the heck of uh, or it might be difficult for us to do. You know, why is somebody at the age of 38 when all the, the pundits say he's too old, um, when they they try to come up with excuses, uh, you know he's he's cheating, uh, um, you know this and that, um, and and to acknowledge or look at it more so from a perspective of what what's the takeaway here, you know what what can we learn, you know did did he did he press the envelope in terms of maybe psychology and, and kind of knowing what was going on with the balls, um, you know possibly, um, but but you know was it more psychological? I think what we're finding out now is if if anything did happen. That's debatable, but if anything did happen, it's probably more psychological than anything else. Uh, it's kind of like you or I probably, you know, wearing our favorite T-shirt or socks to, to the trading desk, um, because clearly, um, you know, the, the, the guy is uh, is just doing some things that I, you know, we may see again, but but probably not in my lifetime. Um, so again, what lessons can we learn from that? And it's the tenacity, it's it's the the, the mental fortitude, the, the physical fortitude. Uh, the training off season, off hours, the the ability to totally uh, disregard all distractions, and I guess that might be the title of this that I, I put on there: uh, eliminating all distractions, managing distractions. But that's the takeaway here, and and this is where I think if we go through life, not you know, uh, you know, geez, this I like this team, I, I don't like this team, I like this player, I don't like this player. You know, we're, we all have favorites and that kind of thing, admittedly. But looking at it more so, wouldn't it be more productive to say, okay, let me let me get over who I like, what I don't like, okay? This guy or this woman is, is good at what they do. They're there at the top of their game. They are uh, one of the outliers that Malcolm Gladwell talks about. Uh, what can I learn from them? You know, what is the takeaway? And the takeaway, the big takeaway from Brady this year is is the ability to totally disregard and totally, you know, deal with distractions as if they're not there. Um, I mean, this guy's been in, in courtrooms, and he's been lambasted in the press and, and this and that, um, to totally, you know, put blinders on, okay? It's a great, great trading lesson, okay? Um, you know, the, the, the support structure that we need in this business, the, the ability to eliminate distractions. I, you can go through a whole host of blog entries and diary entries here. Um, that talk about, you know, dentist appointments and the phone call that happened when it shouldn't have happened. And, and these are all distractions, um, you know, and, and the pundits that are out there, and, and there's certainly a few that have, uh, have some fun at my expense. I say go for it. My goodness, you know, if you, if you can't uplift and encourage, you know, <laughs> as well, you might as well say something that, that I would view as humorous. Um, you know, again, keep in mind that every time we place a trade, there's somebody on the other side of the trade that feels the exact opposite of what we do. So, you know, it kind of goes as a, as a natural characteristic of this business where, um, you know, the, the, in fact, in the trading world, uh, the, the, it'll be more of the majority that disagrees with you than, than the minority because the mi minority is the group of successful traders that are consistent, consistently profitable over time and the majority is on the other side. So, you know, you could 
even though trading is a one for one on a futures uh, basis, uh, zero sum game, you can argue that um, that really you're you're going against the masses uh, in order to uh, to try to carve out that that niche in the business. And uh, uh, so so I get that, I really do. And uh, I I you know folks are going to disagree with me uh, at times, and I uh, I accept that, I embrace it, and you know go for it, go for it. It is a it is a public world. Um, but you know, let's do so in a way where we're not, you know, disparaging and, and all that. Life's too short, okay. And, and if I sound preachy, too bad. <laughs> That's how I feel today. Um, what else did I write down here? Adaptability, um, uh, recent lessons. Um, you know, market clearly from a rhythm perspective is in a, a uh, what I'll kind, what I'll call a slow grind up and quick drop down. And, and you'll see in the blog section lower right where I talk about the the, the current rhythm. Uh, the need to to stay wholesale. You'll see that a lot. It's true all the time, but it's especially true now, where you know you can you can read a market very very well uh, over time and 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 have a losing P and L uh, every day because you're maybe waiting for too much confirmation, getting your side itself on the retail side. You're buying highs, you're buying lows, uh, or, or you're you're buying highs, you're selling lows. Uh, you're you're trading for breakouts. You know, I've got caught in a couple of these uh, recently where. Um, you know, you're, you're in the middle of the ascending triangle, or you're in the middle of the trading range as the market is doing its chop, chop, chop before the next move. Uh, normal, normally, we can catch and play off of those very, very well in terms of MATD morning after trend day, which continues to be probably the best trade of the, the quarter. Um, you know, because how many trend days have we had? Market comes down to support either overnight or the next day, chops around a little bit, continues the, the move from the prior day. I mean, it's happened, uh, you know clearly twice a week for the past several months at least. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's actually a very good good market for that rhythm. It's paid very, very well. Um, but, you know, it, it is a situation where you do have to know, getting back to what we started with, you have to know where we are in the cycle. Uh, and that, that comes from, from screen time. It comes from, uh, you know, being in tune with the market and, and eliminating distractions. Please don't don't pollute your mind with, uh, with other people's thoughts and views. And I, I, I see that too. Uh, with the group of traders that I'm, I'm with right now in terms of, uh, you know, focusing too much on what I would call non-essential information, uh, as is what is somebody else doing in their trade, um, or uh, bid-ask sizes on, on the, uh, the ES price dome, uh, which, again, I mean, there's more games than, than not. If you're going to, if you're going to micro view anything, you know, look at the time and sales because that's real activity. Um, you know, the, the, the dome is, is largely a gain, and I, I continually see people, you know, d d discussing large sizes. Folks, you know, you see, you see on the dome what people want you to see, <laughs> okay? Let's, let's put that one to bed, and, and yes, the orders uh, are real to the extent that, that many of them will fill, but by and large, um, the mass, vast majority of them are advertisements and we know how advertising works in this world. It is often misleading advertising. And, and in this trading world, um, you know, often uh, illegally advertised information because, because folks will pull them. Uh, if, if someone wanted to, if someone was going to sell 3,000 contracts of the S&Ps, you know, they're not going to advertise 3,000 to sell. <laughs> okay. So you see what they want you to see. So, so simplify, get rid of the distractions, anything that's not allowing you to, to center yourself, to focus um, and, and you know, focus on the task at hand. I said to the group the other day, you know, uh, if you're standing in the batter's box, you know, trying to hit that pitch, uh, they can send it right over the plate. But if, if you're watching to see what someone's doing in the stands or what someone's doing in the on-deck circle, I mean, you know, but but by and large, that's that's what I see over and over and over again, and I guess that shows you why the vast majority of these people are not able to cross the line into um, into consistent success. And I've said before, I will also waver on both sides of that line at times, and it's only when I'm focused, and it's only when I've wrapped up my game that I'm able to to have any degree of success in this business. Uh, you know, it it I, I've gotten better at it over time, certainly uh, as we should in life. We should learn our lessons and move on, which leads me to my last thought. Um, you know, the, this is a business where not everybody's going to be successful. There is no magic pill. I don't care what course you take. I don't know who you listen to on the weekends or during the weekdays. It, you know, the, the, the statistics show that the vast majority of people will not survive trading uh, industry. It's a high burnout industry if, if you're a short-term trader. Um, and you've, you've got to be always on your toes. You've got to be always diligent. Otherwise, you can wipe out months and months of work in one day and, and all, all the sorts of, of, of things out there. I say that not to discourage, not to not – to, um, non-uplift you, if you will. 
but I say that because it, it is a statistical fact. And, um, you know, those of us that, that are in this industry, either as, 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 as traders or teachers or mentors or, or whatever it might be, um, you know, we'd be silly not to remind all of us that uh, because of that statistic that, that, for example, everybody who views this video, you know, let's say 500 people, whatever the stats are going to show, um, you know, hopefully it's, it's, it's better than the industry average. Uh, but the industry average is, is easily, you know, 90 percent failure. And, and so, um, you know, we've got to certainly, uh, you know, acknowledge that, that trading is not for everybody. Um, and that we all have to do some individual soul searching, whether trading is right for us, whether we're suited for that, uh, whether it's a bit of a, a fantasy, whether it's a cop out because we, we like it. Maybe maybe we really, really like it, but but aren't good enough to make a, a, a consistent living at or a consistent profit from it. And therefore, it becomes an expensive hobby. If you like expensive hobbies, you know, that, that's OK. <laughs> Just recognize that it's an expensive hobby. So. Um, you know, please, please do your do your own soul searching diligence. Is trading right for you? Uh, does trading fit into your life? Um, and and does, does trading fit into your life at this point in time? You know, and, and that's going to vary. You've seen even with me, I go on and off the grid. I, I press the accelerator. I pull back based on what's happening in my life, family, illness, and that sort of thing. And and uh, you know, we sh we should all be be asking ourselves those questions on a continual basis. So uh, you know, food for thought. Uh, that's what I got for this weekend. Uh, you know, silly as it may be, um, I'm, I'm honored that, that some still find this useful enough. Uh, again, I'd be chatting with myself anyway. So um, have at it. Uh, take the good uh, for what it's worth. Take the not so good and discount it. Um, but uh, all I'm trying to do is give you some food for thought uh, before you start the trading week coming up. God bless you. Have a great uh, end of the weekend and uh, trading week next weekend. We'll catch you next weekend. Take care. Bye.